Jolay Whitney. Today, we're focusing on a spice that transcends cultures, continents, and civilizations, saffron. Renowned as the world's most expensive spice, a pound of saffron can cost over $1,000. Saffron has found a home in Vermont thanks to the North American Center for Saffron Research and Development at UVM. What began with a question from a UVM researcher, will a spice native to Iran and Spain grow in Vermont, has been answered. Across the fences, Ben Willis visited two Vermont saffron growers to find out the fascinating and sometimes painstaking process to plant, cultivate, and harvest the red thread. Okay, now, this isn't rocket science, but everybody has their own way of doing this, by the way. This is just my way. Um, these we're throwing out, sorry. I'm going to put the stigma in there. So there's the stigma right there. Since 2015, UVM entomology professor Margaret Skinner has been leading research into saffron cultivation in North America. I joined Margaret on her test plot at the UVM Horticulture Research and Education Center, where she showed me how to harvest the lucrative but labor-intensive crop. Just pinch it right here? Yep. All right. There we go. Three pieces of saffron. Yeah. Because of the high cost of saffron, it's the most adulterated spice in the world. One of the reasons that we think developing a North American saffron industry is a good idea is because when you buy saffron in, in the market here, if you don't know who grew it, Maybe it's saffron, maybe it's part saffron, maybe it's not saffron at all. And so that's why it's really good to have a local source where you know how it was grown and you know, you know who picked it. You know that it's been uh, produced by people who are ethical about how they treat their staff, etc. Margaret's research began with a graduate student from Iran who asked her, why saffron was not being grown in Vermont. Margaret started to look into why. My initial thought was, oh, it'll never survive here. That's a silly idea. But once Margaret began growing saffron, the small flower yielded big surprises. I think the real eureka moment for us was, oh my goodness, it will survive outside in a cold Vermont winter. Even in the Northeast Kingdom, they can grow it. And when we started back in 2015, our assumption was, based on the literature, that it wouldn't survive in our cold weather. So that's how it all started. The more Margaret learned about saffron, the more clear it became that this could be a perfect crop to grow in Vermont. We're never gonna have large acreages of saffron in, in our region, chances yeah. are. Maybe in some places out west, but um, it's always going to be best suited for small diversified farmers. And we know that over 90% of the farmers in Vermont and in the U.S. are small diversified farmers, so it, it's, it's perfect. So a grower said to me one time, oh Margaret, I love saffron. You know, if I pick a bunch of spinach and I take it to the farmer's market, I spend all this time growing it and picking it and washing it, I take it to the farmer's market, maybe it sells and maybe it doesn't. I take saffron there, maybe it sells and maybe it doesn't. If it doesn't sell, I bring it back and put it back in my drawer. The spinach onto the compost heap and it's a, pretty much a total loss. Not long after beginning her research, word began to spread about Margaret's work. Saffron has a certain mystique to it. And so when we started getting a little bit of press, people said, saffron? The most, ex that super expensive uh, spice? Grow, grow it in Vermont? Yeah. Oh, come on. And so I think it really um, triggered some interest just because of that. It seems so illogical when you think that most of the saffron is coming from warmer climates in Spain or Iran. It just, they thought it was really wild. As Margaret's work began to gain national attention, an aspiring farmer named Jetta came across an article about saffron research at UVM. 
Jeddah and her partner Zaka were inspired. And today, I'm witnessing the result of that inspiration with a visit to their farm, Calabash Gardens. And then we moved here in March, March yeah. of 2017. And then that summer, we bought our first saffron corms. We bought 2,000 of them and we planted them in a test plot um, up on our hill over there. We had two successful seasons with the oh, test yeah. plot and we decided um, in the third year of the test plot to go production. Um, and we bought uh, 120,000 bulbs and we planted an acre and a half. And that was in 2020. It was a tough year to start a business, but Jetta and Zaka persevered. Though there have been many challenges along the way. Finding staff has been a problem. When we went production in 2020, we had a planting party. So we had a four day extravaganza planting party where we took tons of volunteers. I think we had around 75 volunteers that came through um, that weekend and we just planted all together. We got about half of it planted with 75 volunteers. Once the saffron has been picked, dried, and cured, the next big challenge is finding a market. Because it's a brand new market um, in the U.S., we are at the forefront of, of the creation of that market, I guess. And, and so that's been a challenge also, a big challenge. And so marketing, employees, and weather. 2021, 22 winter was, a, was awful for us. It rained copious amounts that winter. And so the, the water was getting frozen in the top six inches of soil and didn't have the ability to drain away. And that was really problematic for the bulbs. The regenerative ecosystem of Vermont is also proving to be quite quite the task because we grow weeds like okay. like there is no tomorrow but none of this has discouraged Jetta and Zaka from pursuing their dream with the help they of it. Margaret's they're research so they are full so of happy. optimism like just, for the future so, they're just so happy. Yeah. from every step of the way her contribution has been invaluable to us. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, she's been a wealth of knowledge, a rash as well. Um, we have bounced ideas off of them, asked them uh, so many questions. They've been a huge support to us. Um, and I hope that, you know, in return, our farm has also been sort of an interesting uh, way for them to sort of garner some, some knowledge as well. Feeling inspired myself, and dreaming of following the footsteps of Margaret and Jetta at Calabash Gardens. I'm Ben Willis with Across the Fence. Thanks, Ben. Margaret Skinner joins me now in studio. She's a research professor at the University of Vermont, and she leads the North American Center for Saffron Research and Development at UVM. Welcome. Thank you. Um, so before we get into some of our other questions, I think you brought some stuff with you to the studio today. Can you tell me about what you have here? Yes, uh, I have some petals here, and the flowers produce a lot of petals, and usually uh, most growers just throw them away, and uh, we like to dry them. Uh, someone mentioned that potentially you could um, soak your feet in them, and I tried that, and my feet got really soft, but I, I haven't fully tested it, but it has potential, I think, from a... <laughs> Oh, a cosmetic standpoint. Uh, this is what saffron looks like. This is a half a gram, which would cost between 20 to $40 for a half a gram. Some growers are getting $75 uh, per gram, <clears throat> which is more than um, what you would pay gold for. Is uh, that for in Vermont? So are people yes, selling? Uh, yes, okay. yep, in Vermont. And there's another large grower in uh, California that Okay. That's high prices. Um, mostly sold online, uh, and that's where the most, that's where it's easiest to sell saffron these days. This is some saffron infused honey. There's a company in Vermont, Runamuck um, Maple, that is selling saffron infused honey, that, and they get the honey 
or they get the saffron uh, from the calabash gardens, which is sort of nice. And this is what the corn looks like um, bef sort of after it sprouted. Um, we didn't plant those, and so it just shows what the corns look like. <clears throat> and of course, saffron doesn't go from, from flower to, to gram quite as easily as that. It's pretty labor intensive. Can you tell me about the process? Um, yes, yeah, so uh, on the video it showed the picking process, and it takes probably Oh, 10 minutes to um, pick 100 flowers, and then you take those flowers and you have to separate the stigmas from the rest of the flower. That takes another maybe 10 minutes for 100 flowers, and um, you get um, to get one gram of saffron, you have to process about uh, 150 to 160 flowers. So it is quite labor intensive. However, it's all at one time. Um, the saffron flowering season lasts for about two to three weeks maximum. And when you look at tomatoes or some of the other standard crops, um, they start a tomato crop in April or May, maybe, and they're still dealing with uh, pruning it, harvesting it, all the pest management, etc., for several months. So this is a whole lot all at once. Um, so in some respects, it's, um, it's labor intensive. I'm not sure it's a whole lot more labor intensive than some of these other crops. It's just that those crops are spread out over months. All right, and you, so you mentioned other crops that farmers in Vermont especially grow um, with how the benefits of growing saffron and maybe how much it gets on the market. Why isn't everyone in Vermont growing that? Right. It's still, it's a very new crop. It, I would call it an emerging industry for us. And when you think that in 2015, even we didn't even think it was possible to grow it here. And um, it's, what's been happening in the United States in general is a lot of small diversified growers are realizing they need to come up with new crops. They're not going to be able to make a living, sadly, just growing peas and carrots and tomatoes. They need to come up with some other high value crops and that's why we thought saffron had some potential. All right, um, thank you so much for joining us and if you're interested in uh, growing saffron at home, um, what's some advice if you want to get started? Um, the tricky thing is you have to really order the corms early. You plant the corms in uh, August so that they bloom in September. So you have to sort of be ahead of the game to plant them. All right, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. All right, that takes care of another Cross the Fence today. Thank okay. you for watching and have a good one.